this and the night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land and he will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will rise up the old age found foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls and restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on the holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honourable, and if you honour it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then the Lord will find your joy in the, then you will find your your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in comfort on the heights of the land and to feast on inheritance of your father Jacob, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's the end of the reading. Amen. This is the way verse 6 onwards tells us this is what fasting is about. This is why we fast. Verse 6, it is to loose the bonds of injustice. That's what we fast for, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thong of the yoke. Now, that thong, my, my, my uh, translation and the King James calls it the thong, and others call it a band. It's a piece of rope, a thin, strong piece of rope. Okay, a thong or a band or, is a strong piece of rope, and it ties you ties the individual to, to, to the, a particular yoke. A yoke is something that you're carrying. Okay, if you think of two cows and they're pulling a plow, they are yoked together, tied together to the plow and they're pulling the plow because they want to, the, the farmer wants to break up the ground. All right, and the yoke is heavy. And sometimes we are carrying heavy stuff heavy from that we've been tied to generational issues our grandfather our great-grandfather our great-grandfather just for, as an example used to do or dabble used to make a covenant with the devil and that demonic activity has gone down the generation and it's now affecting you as a believer in Jesus Christ, you've come to faith, you've got to draw a line in the sand and say, enough is enough. And I'm going to fast and pray, and I'm going to undo that thing that has tied me to the past. Those are called generational issues. Okay? You know, grandfather was a, a, an alcoholic, great-grandfather was a alcoholic now you can't even touch uh, go near alcohol without it affecting you break that yoke how do you break it by true fasting fasting and prayer he says here to let the oppressed go free yokes cause oppression let me tell you sometimes because we don't understand the principles of the Lord, sometimes we, we earn a lot of money, but it comes in one hand and it goes out the other. Because we don't know how to handle it. Becomes a yoke. And we want to break that yoke. Come on. And then it says you've got to, uh, to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your home. That's about compassion, the social gospel. So our gospel has got to be rounded, not just about me. What can I get from God today? No, no, no. It's not a prosperity gospel where it says, I'm going to prosper at your expense. I need a new jet, so I need you to fund it. No, 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 no. Not at all. It's if I prosper, you must prosper too. Why? Because we are using the same paradigm. We are using the same principles. Amen? And that's why we fast. 
That's why we pray. That's why we deny ourselves. You know, sometimes we become so busy that we cannot even stand still and hear from the Lord. Lord, I always say, Lord, what are you saying, Lord? Okay, what are you saying, Lord? And, and the Lord is speaking all the time. But because you're so busy running around, you've got those earphones on your ears. You see those people on earphones on their ears in the train? In, 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 you, and you're listening to your own stuff. You cannot hear what God is saying. And the Lord is saying, be still. Be still. And as uh, we fast, we give up food, our system changes. We get hungry pains, hunger pains. Okay, but I'm telling you, once you get over the bump, it becomes easy. But you got to get over that bump. Right? When you and you see the chocolate there, and the chocolate is talking to you. Amen. It's talking to you. <laughs> you have to get over that bump. Amen. And that that's what it's about. And so, as the, as the songwriter, as the Isaiah reminds us why we fast, we fast to break, to undo the thongs. Let me just say a little bit about undoing the thong, all right? Because when you tie something up or tie someone up, it can be not just one, you know, like not just one reef knot. It can be, there's a lot of cord wrapped around that individual or wrapped around that thing which is con connecting you. And you fast for half a day and it undoes one thing, okay? But you're still tied. And this is why you've got to keep on, listen, listen to me, this is why Jesus fasted for 40 days. Why? Because he had to undo a lot of burdens. Okay? When Jesus came out of fasting, the Bible says, the very day he came out of fasting, the enemy came to him and tempted him and said, boy, you're hungry. <laughs> and you're a miracle worker. Turn those stones into bread. So you're going to be challenged on your physical level. You're going to, that's your flesh. You're going to be challenged on your psychological level and you're going to be challenged spiritually. Okay? Turn those stones into bread. You must have an answer. You must know the word. And Jesus says, <laughs> I can turn them into bread, but man must not live by bread alone, but by, but by, Every word that comes from as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, it will not return void, but will accomplish what it was sent to do. The word says, man must not live by that's what the word says. But by every word comes from the mouth of God. The word came from God. The word is God. And the word is still God. And the word says, get up and walk. Take up your bed and walk. And the lame man walked. The word says, eyes. Open! And eyes open. Whatever the word was sent to accomplish, it accomplished it. And now the word is saying, Wembley Family Church, it's time to stand up. It's time to stand up. It's time to get in your position. It's not time for pats on the back and see who can do what, outdo one another. It's time to work together. And if I'm hurting, you should be hurting too. And when I'm rejoicing, you're rejoicing too. Amen. And so we've come 
Today is our first day of our fast. And we will not weary our, I will not weary your patience. And so, if you turn your booklets to page four, I ask the question, why fast? Page four. And this is, the, have you got a booklet? Good. Fasting is part and parcel of the normal Christian experience. There are many biblical characters who change their situation by regularly petitioning God so that the situation they were in could be changed. For example, Daniel fasted for 21 days. Now Daniel didn't abstain from food, he just changed his diet and didn't drink any strong drink or wine. That's called the Daniel fast. He just stayed on pulses and legumes and vegetables. Uh, Queen Esther learned that there was a plot to annihil annihilate the Jews and she and her uncle Mordecai and a select group of Jewish people fasted for three days and, and nights without food and water. If you've had read one of the brochures, I said, that is usually the limit that you go without food and water, three days and three nights. Some people do it for seven, but it's not recommended. You, when you're fasting, you must drink water, okay? Drink liquid, if hot or cold. Then she acted and saved her people. When we've come out of this period of fasting, you've got to do something. You're going to do something different. And in the New Testament, Jesus fasted in preparation for his ministry for 40 days without food, but he had water. The scripture doesn't say that he was thirsty. It says he was hungry. That's when he was tested. Fasting is biblical and beneficial and is voluntary. I cannot force you to fast. You're going to have to want to do it. And I pray that you want to do it. Why? Because you want a, your life to turn around. Because God is good. Amen. He's good to me. How can I? The aim of our fast is to repair the damages done in the past with a view to bring about the repair of relationships where possible and to aid total reconciliation. Repair to family relationships will lead to repair to fellowships and that the gift of repentance which is as difficult of the gift as the gift of reconciliation is put in place. Families, relationships form the bedrock of our experience, of our existence, and our families are integral to that. The plan of the evil one is to separate family members and thereby isolate them. They then become cannon fodder. Once they are separated, they become easy pickings for the enemy. This is typical, the typical operation of the enemy. Separate, isolate, and emasculate. Shall I say that again? The enemy wants to separate, isolate, and emasculate. Separate means to, to take you away from your loved ones or those who you used to, you used to care for. Isolate means you be on your own, okay? And when you're on your own, you're vulnerable. Emasculate means to dispower you, to remove all the power that you have. How many of us know that we're powerful? But well, we are more powerful when we are more prayerful. Seven days without prayer makes one week. You'll get it. It does. Seven days without prayer makes one week. The isolated individual be then becomes easy prey and can become a stumbling block to good relationship within the family. This is the same model that is used within the church family. Jesus uses the metaphor of a sheep to illustrate the point. Sheep are intimately connected to each other and to the shepherd. The shepherd is responsible for the welfare of all the sheep and what is over them. The prey, who is hell-bent on causing destruction in the flock, 
comes in to isolate those vulnerable sheep and seek to emasculate them so that he can get gradually destroy them. If you isolate yourself individually or form part of a clique that seeks to become separate from the main fellowship, then you face the risk of causing a great rift, which could end up splitting the church. Fellowship. Restoration of fellowship is vital for church growth and the future of the church. Fellowship is the ability of each member to empathize with and care for each other. This is the outworking of true, genuine love for each other. The desire to see another individual grow and develop is at the heart of true Christian love. And this is the epitome of how Jesus defined his fellows. He says, by the ability to act justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly before our God, this should be the hallmark of true believers. We are called to embrace others and not to ostracize them. This is true fellowship. We love not because they are like us, but because they are made in the image of, the God, of, the, of God, just like us. Restoration of true fellowship, therefore, is the restoration of the image of God. Not a visible image, but as but as but but as the eternal Im ethereal image quoted in scripture as this is the image of god folks love joy peace patience kindness generosity faithfulness gentleness and self-control and the apostle paul Regarding these, this is the image of God, there is no law. No one can stop you from having self-control. You've got to do it yourself. No one can stop you from being peaceful and having patience. You've got to do it yourself. No one can stop you from loving somebody else. You've got to do it yourself. And love isn't just oozy woozy koozy love. Love isn't just eros. Love is, love, when I'm doing uh, uh, counseling for young couples, I tell them, this is how I spell love, T-I-M-E. That's how I spell love, when I'm counseling folks. Why? Because the time that you spend with someone determines how much you love them. If you love me, you visit me. If you love me, you care for me. If you love me, you, you find out my welfare. If you love me, you find out how I'm, I'm doing. And if I love you, I reciprocate in like manner. That's what true love is. I'm telling you, during mother's illness and hospitalization, my uh, cousin's wife, she said, she rings me up and said, oh, I'm coming round. I've got two fish for you. Oh, I'm coming round. I've got some food for you. And, and so I, I don't even have to cook some of the times. Why? Because people love us. That's what Christian love is. You come and find out where your neighbors live, your brothers and sisters, and visit them. Jesus used to visit his friends. One day he visited Lazarus' his home. And Mary and Martha said, Jesus, Lazarus is dead. He said, I know. I know he's dead. And that's why I'm here. Praise the name of Jesus. Why? Because I am the resurrection and the life though you were dead even though you believe in me you shall live and those who live and believe in me shall never die never ever amen lastly finances this is particularly touchy this is a particularly touchy and touchy area there's an old adage that says the last place of an individual to be saved is their pocket. This saying becomes true because people are not taught about giving, which then becomes a chore. Giving becomes a chore. 
Once we develop the right attitude towards money, we will realize that A, we cannot outgive God, and B, if the biblical principle are fo principles are followed in our daily lives, then God is mandated to ensure that you prosper financially. The principle of tithing ensures that you learn from an early age to give the first portion of your earnings to the Lord. This means that you develop a, a generous heart and learn to become a giver. That mirrors the heart of God who was so enamored with us, his creation, that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, so that we might be saved. At WFC, and those of you who are joining us online, we teach and practice the principle of giving as opposed to paying tithes. We don't pay tithes, we give tithes. Give is from the heart, pain is from the pocket. Amen? There's a, this, there's a real difference there. If you pay tithes, then you've got an obligation to pay. If you give, you give what you can afford, and you give according to the principle. Some of you are hearing this for the first time, and I hope that you reread it again. That is, you give 10%, and 10% is the minimum. It is not fixed in stone. And that's why the argument about net or gross is irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. Oh, should I give 10% net or 10% gross of my family, I, my, my uh, salary, i.e., should I give after the government has taken tax or before the government has taken tax? It's irrelevant. You give as the Lord has prospered you. 10% is a baseline. It says, this is where you start from. If you can give more, give more. An ungodly man such as Bill Gates and Melinda Gates, they pledged to give away 90% of their income. He might be the Antichrist, I don't know. <laughs> there are lots of Antichrists, but we won't go there. So 10% of your income you give to the Lord, and you save 10%, and use the remaining 80% to live off. Try this principle if you haven't. You will find that, this is what I say in the booklet, by applying this principle, the individual finds that the 80% that remains stretches further than the original 100% that they have. Because when Jesus is involved in anything, it multiplies. Amen? Do you understand that, everybody? So you give 10% as a baseline, as a minimum of what you earn. You save 10%. Always save, right? Even if it's only £5 a month or £5 a week, always save. Okay? But try to save 10% of your earning. Tithe 10% and live off the 80%. Trust me, you will see tremendous turnaround in your life. I'm, I'm talking from experience. Amen? And, some, and a lot of people can... I've got witnesses here, haven't I? <clears throat> yes, you've got a witness that once you give, you can't outgive God. For our finances to be restored, we need to become good givers. Amen. So that's the, that's the highlight and the setting the scene for why we fast and setting the uh, understanding of how we ought to do things. Okay? Now, is Nikisha online? Nikisha here? Yeah? She's online? Okay. Sister Yvonne, can you come and read Psalm 23 for us? Whilst you're coming, um, if Brother Tyrone and Sister Donna, if you sit at the front here, ready? Psalm 23. Got it? Are you going to use my Bible? Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're supposed to come ready. <laughs> okay. 
I got to meet you. So I've totally forgot you that well anyway. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, lead, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Amen. My darling. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, my brother and my sister, one of the things that I must share with us as a fellowship is that we are organized. Amen? We're organized. And I'm telling you, my wife used to spend a lot of time getting all our paperwork together. And so we, we have a, uh, a booklet which outlines what every individual should do. If you haven't got one, please see me. I'll get you one, either electronically or printed. And uh, this booklet sets out what we believe. It sets out how you're supposed to behave. And it also sets out the fact that Every single one of us must try to find out what our gifts and talents are so that we can use them for the glory of God. If you don't know what your talents are, you can't use them. If you don't know what your gifts are, you can't use them. All right? Development of gifts. In page five of this booklet says this. Gifts, we will, gifts will be developed through teaching, training, and practical application. That's use, self-discovery, and exposure. Those are the three ways your gifts will be developed. You use them, you develop, you find out what you're good at, and you start to expose it. All right, because the Bible says in Proverbs 18, a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men or a woman. In that case, the Bible isn't sexist like that. As part of the family, it is our desire that every member will discover, develop, and deploy their gifts. Scripture tells us that we have all been given spiritual gifts, Ephesians 4 verse 8. And it is our duty, say our duty, say my duty to use my gifts for the benefit of the church and to the glory of God. Some folks have got gifts, but they use it to get rich. Beyonce, fantastic singer. Um, what's her name? Whitney Houston, fantastic singer. You know the last, last song she's recorded as singing, or she's reported as singing before she died? Jesus loves me this I know. Guess where she learned that from? Come on. Use your gift for the glory of God. When all the spiritual gifts of the Spirit, which are wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirit, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues, that's not the limitation. That's just a list, a simple list of some of them. When they are being used properly in the church, then the fellowship will grow. If you're an evangelist, you get people in. That's a gift. So you don't just become something in the church 
just as warm the benches. You have to use that gift for and to the glory of God. And I write here, our vision is to see every member of the body functioning in their rightful place so that the anointing from the Lord will flow through the fellowship, causing us to flourish individually, to grow corporately, and to become true representatives of Christ. Our, we have a, a mission statement. How many of us know that we have a mission statement? How many of us know what the mission statement is? Okay, let me read it. The mission statement is this. Baba Tyrone, Sister Donna, is to love God passionately in worship, prayer, and evangelism, to serve Him biblically by being dedicated to studying the Bible often, living in community relevantly by making new converts, supporting others, and releasing some to world mission. mission. Living in community relevantly. I mean, when you become a, a Christian, you don't get a roaming eye. You start to care. Because as my grandson told me, in his own inimitable way, caring is sharing. And sharing is caring. Okay. Granddad, can, you, uh, can I have some of your, what you're eating? Because sharing is is caring amen so we learn to care by sharing and if the lord gives you a word you share it in a manner that's going to build up it's not a thing thus said the lord next week you're going to die no 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 <laughs> if the lord tells you that someone's going to die next week you you get them to change so that they can live you understand so you've got to be really really caring so that you can be sharing all right so these are for you guys <laughs> because i'm caring <laughs> and there's a bit on the back that you can sign and um i've also got here and i realize why my wife is always late for work i mean always late for church she's always producing these documents and uh this is a, a membership covenant, all right? And uh, Alex, I'm going to give you one of the booklets as well, and also one of the membership covenant for you to mull over. And if you so feel so desire, you can actually be part and parcel of this wonderful community of brethren in Sudbury. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on, you, you agree with that? I love my church. I'm the, am I the only one? Therefore, if I love my church, I've got to protect my church. Okay? In the covenant, there are several things here. It says, the benefits of being a member of Wembley Family Church are spiritual covering for you and your family, the right to grow to spiritual maturity, the right to exercise your spiritual gifts and talents to the, body of, to the benefit of the body of Christ, the right nearly there, to be used in the helps ministry. The right for the pastors and elders to visit and pray with you in times of need. The right to vote and help make major decisions in the church. The right to tithe and give offerings and receive God's abundant blessing. And the right for you and your children to attend the Sunday school and be taught the, the word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, Let's get back to, let's get back to our topic, our theme, and our word from Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11. I'm just going to read it one more time. And this is what it says. For as the rain, and it's raining outside coincidentally, as the rain and the snow, we haven't got any snow though, thank goodness, come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth 
making it bring forth and sprout and giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, says the Lord. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I've sent it. Last day the Lord told us to seek him, verses 5 and 6, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And the Lord says to us, let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thought. Let them turn, return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now I did send out a WhatsApp message on the Wembley Family Church group and I ask everyone to think of rain or an aspect of rain. No, before, you can just check that the heating is still on. So I'm going to ask you just to shout out your understanding of what rain means to you. Okay? Sister Brenda, shout it out, man. Blessing. Cleansing. Leonie? Growth. What about some of the guys? Oh, we come from a farming background, so it's, you know, uh, prosperity. Yeah. Nurture. Rain. Abundance. Rain. Cleansing. Rain. Restoration. Rain, Brother Floyd, what does it mean? One word. Uh, replenish. Replenish. Uh, what? A new beginning, Ainsley. What did it? Okay, Laquan. Same as Ainsley, okay. <laughs> okay. So, end of the drought. Paul. Holy Spirit, girl. Cleansing. Rebecca. Joy, you're going to pray in a minute, okay? Don't forget, I haven't forgotten you. Okay, Alex, can you put the YouTube video on the screen and also share it so that those online can see it, okay? Let's have some volume. Let's look at the science of Everybody rain volume. and how raindrops form. First, we'll need the sun. Hold on. Start it again. Share the volume as well on YouTube, on the, uh, uh, on, on Zoom. When the sun Start shines on water on the Earth's surface, the heat of the Have sun the warms the water, on? turning it. Plug it in, huh? Zoom, zoom, no? Yeah, zoom should be on. The volume was mute. Turn it up, the volume up. Whilst we get into an invisible Come gas on. called water vapor. Still no volume. Have you plugged you plugged it in? Yeah, that's the one. It's only a couple of minutes this video, but it talks about Yeah, turn the, the, yeah, turn the mute off. I'll play. Let's look at the science of rain and how raindrops form. First, we'll need the sun. You ready? We're going to get there eventually. Amen. <laughs> Let's look at the science of rain and how raindrops fall. First, we'll need the sun. When the sun shines on water on the Earth's surface, the heat of the sun warms the water, turning it into an invisible gas called water vapor. This process 
the changing of water into a gas is called evaporation. Because gases are lighter than liquids, water vapour rises up into the sky. And the further you move up and away from the Earth's surface, the colder the temperature gets. So in the sky, the water vapour cools and changes back into tiny water droplets. This change is called condensation and is the opposite of evaporation. Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets, so when condensation occurs in the sky, clouds form and grow. Let's take a closer look. When water droplets bump into one another, they stick together and grow in size. They continue to grow until they are too heavy and fall as rain. They even grow as they bump into one another on their journey from the cloud to the ground. And every single raindrop that reaches the ground is made up of one million of the original tiny water droplets. Raindrops fall on the ground surface where the sun can shine on them and the whole process happens again. This is called the water cycle and keeps water moving from the ground to the sky, providing the water needed for plants, animals and people to survive. So now you know. Amen, and now you know. So, the water from the ground evaporates and goes up to the sky because of the sun. The sun, S-U-N, causes the water to evaporate and goes up. And then when the water goes up, the further it goes, the colder it is as you go into the atmosphere, into the stratosphere, it then accumulates, comes together. And as it comes together, it, a thousand droplets come together to form one rain droplet, which then drops to the floor, which waters the earth and causes the seed that's in the earth to germinate, to grow, produce stuff for the eater to reap, and so the cycle continues. <clears throat> Let me put this to you folks. The rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return until they have watered the earth. Okay, you saw, you saw that. The rain comes down, doesn't go back until it's watered the earth. And then after it's watered the earth, it goes back. Okay, let me try to get you to think of this analogy that something has to go up first, isn't it? Before something comes down. And that which goes up, okay, is warmed by the sun. What if what goes up comes from me and is validated by the S-O-N? And then those things that go up are put together and then poured out on the people who believe. What happens if that which goes up is warm air from me and we call it our praises? So as my praise goes up, the S-O-N gathers them. Come on. And he gathers my praise and your praise and our praise. And then at the right time, he pours them out. And it becomes a blessing. It becomes the, the, the thing that you need to grow. Praise the name of Jesus. And so the cycle continues. And so the songwriter says, when the praises go up, the blessing come down. But the blessing ain't gonna come down just like that. You've got to send up something. Hallelujah. And absolutely, harvest time does not come overnight. It takes for you to have patience, long suffering, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Because it is in the waiting period 
when you could go off peace, as they say, you go off track. You start to do your own thing. But the Bible says, teach me to wait, O oh Lord. Teach me to wait. Because I want the former rain. Come on. And I want and I need the latter rain. Because when the rain comes down, something happens in my soul. You are transformed. You are changed. Amen. You are cleansed. Who said cleansing? Rain brings cleansing. Huh? Cleansed. You are renewed. You are replenished. You get your mojo back. Anybody want to get their mojo back? Ask the Lord that you'll get the joy of the Lord. And you don't complain and moan and carry on. You just do what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. And amen. And so when you think about rain, think about these things. Think about the cycle of life. Think, think about the cycle that comes to you. The rain, the vapor goes up and it, then it condenses. And then when it condenses, it, become, it comes together. It, it becomes discombobulated, that's taken apart, but it's put back together. I mean, this, this is why in being part of the fellowship means you've got to be together. You cannot be a lone shepherd, a lone sheep. You can't be a lone ranger on your own. You've got to belong to a fellowship. You've got to be planted somewhere. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But, there is always a but. But his delight is in the way of the Lord, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. When you meditate day and night, the Bible says, you shall be, come on, like a tree. You're going to be planted somewhere. Why? Because you're going to face storms. Storms are going to come. Temptation is going to come. But you, the Bible says, the righteous, Psalm 73, the righteous are like a palm tree. When the storm comes, you know what the palm tree does? Just come on. Just bow with the storm. You're going to ride out the storm. But to do that, you've got to be planted. Why? And your roots go down. And your roots seek out water. Why? Because water causes replenishment. Is that right? Shout it out. It causes growth. It causes refreshing. It causes, the, it's like the Holy Spirit. It refreshes my soul. And then like the psalmist, you can say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not going to fear. I am not going to fear. I am not going to fear. I am not going to fear. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, the Lord will look after you. He will look after everything that you, you give to him. The Lord will look after everything that you commit to him. He says, commit your entire ways to the Lord and he will look after you. Amen and amen. We're nearly done. You're going to, you're going, I'm going to ask you to give your offering online or whatever. Remember, tithe. 10%. If you give your tithe once a month, that's fine. Offering is different from tithe, okay? But it's all giving. You can ask the praise and worship to come now. And they're going to sing for us, purify my heart. Let me be as, let me be as, 
Don't worry, you're going to get to sing your song at the end. Let me be as... <laughs> Let me be as... And stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, 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 quickly, quickly. Galatians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul writes that he went up to Jerusalem and there he is the Apostle to the Gentiles. Galatians chapter 2, verses Let me read from verse 7 onwards. He says, On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised, for whom he worked through Peter, making him apostle to the circumcised, also worked through me, Paul says, sending me to the Gentiles. And James and Cephas and John, 
who were acknowledged pillars recognized the grace that had been given to me. They gave to Barnabas and me the right and the, of fellowship, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles, so and they to the circumcised. And they asked only one thing, that we remember the poor, which was actually what I was eager to do, says the Apostle Paul. Eager to remember those who are less fortunate. And so, brother, uh, we've already given you, we can give you again, but we've already given you the right and the fellowship. Yeah. Amen. So I just want you to stand beside Tyrone because it's good, two is better than one for moral support. And so, brother Tyrone, we're welcoming you into this fellowship formally by giving you the right and the fellowship. You've got a booklet, you know what we stand for, you know what the Lord demands of you, you require it. And he wants you to live according to his word. So, just like the pillars gave the apostle the right to the person, so we add the right to the person. So welcome to the church. God bless you. God bless you. All the leaders come. And uh, everyone just come and all the leaders. And, uh, and then every, everyone come and invite him. Purify my heart cleanse me cleanse me from within and make me holy Thank you first. welcome you me my heart cleanse me from within cleanse me from within
You can praise him. Hallelujah. You can praise him. You can Thank praise him. You can give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. You can worship him. Hallelujah. You can lift up his name. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sun who shines in my life. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's day one over. Okay, that, that's day one over. Now we've got day two, yes. day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, and eight. Now day two, uh, tomorrow on Zoom from seven to eight, Elder Dawn, Sister Dawn, are you going to prepare to do that word? And you're one of the significance of the rain and snow and its relevance for today. Day three. I don't, Paul, you can't do that, you're saying. Or can you do day three? Paul, you're going to do the significance of watering of the seed and its relevance today. Day four, Floyd, can you day four? This is only about a 10 minute slot at the beginning of the, of the, of the Zoom meeting. We'll play a song. So 10 minutes at the beginning, you give that thought, and then we're going to pray for the re relevant topics local, national, and inter international, okay? Floyd, that's good. Day five, Cheryl, you can do day five. Excellent. The significance of word, not returning empty. You've got to give a, a word about that. And then it tells you what to pray for on the prayer list. Day six, Pauline, that's Friday. Yeah, that's good. So you're going to do the significance and you're going to pray for the various parachurch organizations. And if you don't know what they mean, call me. Day seven. Now, Brother Chris, you said that might be difficult on a Saturday, day seven. So who's doing that? Rebecca. So put Rebecca's name there for us, please. Rebecca. All right. And then day eight, we're back here on, on, in church on Sunday. And I think somebody else should do lead on Sunday. To do the service on Sunday, next coming Sunday. Sister Dawn is going to do that. Who? You? Who? Sister Dawn. Sister Dawn. Sister Dawn to do that. She's nominated. Yes, she's nominated. She wants it to be her. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go for Sister Brenda. So you, you moderate on Sunday. Yeah? Sunday the 15th. Yeah. And then after that, we'll meet, we'll break our fast, and we'll have a time, and we'll have like a little mini AGM, where everybody can hear their views, and we'll make sure that we've got the, the right, we're in the right trajectory, okay? Okay, now, we finish our service, we're going to pray, ask Rebecca to pray for the issues that are listed on the paper, then after that, uh, we've got a minute or so, but you were late anyway, we started late. So after that, you can sing your song after we pronounce the benediction, the other song, if you want, and feel the anointing. That's okay? All right. Sister Rebecca, come. Hmm? Yes, please. Good afternoon, church. We thank the Lord for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, you have been great to us. You've been so good to us, Father. We thank you that you sit in heaven and rule the earth. We thank you that you're all-powerful, almighty, all-sufficient. There is no other God like you, Father God. So, Father, we just commit this intercessory praise into your hands right now. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And we thank you that you are in our midst right now. And we give you all the praise and the glory, Father God. Lord, we pray for a touch on every single person here, Father God. I pray that they will not leave the way they have come, Father God. Lord, whatever the issues are, whatever their problems are, Father, there is no mountain that is too difficult for you, Almighty God. So, Father, I thank you that you are touching every heart right now, even those that have not come today, Father Lord. I pray that you will touch them, awaken them, Father Lord. I pray that they will
they will look unto you and not their problems, oh God, Father, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise right now, Father God. And we welcome you deep into our hearts, Father Lord. For we are hungry for you, Father Lord. You alone we seek today, Father Lord. And you alone we have made up our mind, Father God, that it is you that we will worship. So, Father, right now have your rightful place in our hearts, in our lives, in every area of our lives, Father Lord. We commit to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for the theme of restoration, God fulfilling his word. Lord, the word is, the word of the Lord will not return to him void, Isaiah 55, verse 10, 11. And the theme song, God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is being so good to us. You know, he's not just Jesus. He's more than that. You know, I am the only Christian in the generation. I know that. He is not just God. He is a living God. He is alive. He can move any mountain. There is nothing too hard for you. Just because it has not happened yet does not mean it will not happen. We've got to have faith for the things that have not happened yet. Yes, we believe in this living God because he's alive not because he's dead because he's alive and because he's alive we know that he's able to do all things our hope is in him our hope is in him alone not in any man not in any woman but in God alone so father you are good you are good we pray father that this church will just run after this word and we will run not just today but for the whole of the year father lord that they, we will have the witness of this word in our our spirit and father we want to thank you thank you for pastor marva thank you heavenly father for your word is true father lord first john 3 9 jesus says take away the stone he said did i not say to you that if you believe you will see the glory of god so i declare today father god that this stone is going to be removed so we will see the goodness of god in pastor marva to walk in this place father lord so we declare complete and full healing in the name of the lord jesus christ father we just give you praise and we thank you father lord and lord we just give you all the honor father and we pray for the leaders for the pastors for all the brethren of this church that god will lead us through his power of the holy spirit we pray for love we pray for unity we pray for our hearts to be in the right place and we pray that lord that we want to do this not because we are told but because this is the will of god for us to walk in unity for us to love each other for us to just forget about how we feel but for us to walk in the will of god so that we may be blessed so our families will be blessed so for everything we touch we'll be blessed so father we just give you praise and we want to continue to pray for the revival and salvation of our families, friends, and communities. We pray for all our families and our friends and all those that we know to return to God and to come back to the house of God to rebuild the church, to rebuild the community, to rebuild ourselves, to rebuild wherever we are put in so that the Lord's name will be glorified. So, Father, I want to thank you for everyone. We pray that you will touch them by your spirit, Father Lord, and that they will have an awakening call from you, Father Lord. Jesus, I give you praise. We pray for the believers who are not able to return to the house of the Lord, that they will join the weekly midweek meetings. We pray that the weekly meetings will, will, be, will, will resume after a week of praying and fasting, 8 to 15th of January, meeting from 7 to 8 every evening. Father, we pray that everyone will join us next week. We pray that they will have that hunger. We pray that when they join, Father Lord, they will know that they have joined because the Lord will be there. And we thank you, Father, that you will take over these meetings. And Lord, that we will not speak, but that you will speak through us, oh God, Father Lord, for your name to be glorified. And Father, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our new building and all the facilities that we need. Lord, we want to give you praise and we thank you father for this building we release that building right now in the name of jesus we prophesy to the northwest east and south and we command this building to come right now in the name of the lord jesus christ father we thank you you said
said we'll have whatever we say. So we give you praise, Father Lord. And we pray for the revival of the Sunday school and youth ministry. Father, we speak revival. We speak revival to Sunday school. We command the school to grow in the name of Jesus. God, we just continue to pray for the sick and the bereaved. Lord, we pray for all those are sick here today all those that know the people that are sick all those that are sick that are loved ones father lord lord we pray that you will touch them lord i thank you that you are the same you are the same yesterday today and forever you do not stop your healing father lord you are still healing today and you will continue to heal so lord we thank you that we call on to the father who never stops working so father we pray for that healing touch on every single person here in our families lord we pray that you will touch them and those who are suffering those who are being breathed lord i pray that your comforting arms will be around them father god that lord you will begin to give them your amazing love lord let them feel your amazing love let the great memories be their love father lord jesus i give you praise and i just commit all these prayers into your arms lord i thank you for hearing us i thank you father lord and i commit everyone into your arms father lord lord i pray that these people that are present here they will not be the same every week they will begin to be different because you are with them you are in them and you are around them therefore they cannot stay the same father lord we must move we must be changed we must be transformed we must do what the lord has called us to do so father i just give you praise and i commit everyone into your arms lord and i just pray this in the name of jesus amen Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're coming to the end of our service. And we're going to ask uh, Brother Floyd to come and do the benediction. And then we'll have the notices. Who's doing the notices? Okay. And then Sister Pauline is going to come and do the notices. Come on, Brother Floyd. Me fine as fire, my heart wants is to be only set apart for you. I choose to be only set apart for you, my master. Afternoon, church, and those on Zoom as well. Let's just close our eyes and bow our heads. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore amen, amen. continue standing while I read the notices Notice for Wembley Family Church today. Just want to thank everyone for joining us online and those here with us in the sanctuary today. I want to remind you about Bible study. We're taking a break until February 2023, to the end of February, so we start back in March. Oh, we're going to start back at the beginning of February, sorry. We draw attention to this year, Wembley Family Church, we're encouraging every member to take part in the collective eight-day fast from today, 8th of January, 
until the 15th of January. We will meet up for one hour each day between 7 and 8 p.m. on Zoom to pray for various issues and to hear from the Lord as to what he is saying to us. And the link will be sent out in the group chat. If you would like to share a testimony, song, or scripture that will bring glory to God and uplift a brother or sister, please see Brother Paul or Sister Gail. Tithes and offerings should be transferred to Wembley Family Church bank account. Gifting envelopes, that's for those who are online, gifting envelopes are with the ushers if you're in church and are able to give today. Refreshments will be served at the back of the church service as we open our fast. And birthday for the week, we've got Sister Natasha Buckingham and Laquan McHale. So, okay, we'll do that afterwards. We're going to sing happy birthday for them both. So who wants to start the singing? I can't sing. Okay. To get some music, maestro, come on. Happy birthday to you. Okay, can um, Sister Natasha and Brother Laquan? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Wait, wait. Would you like to say something on your birthday? Anyone? Come and say a few words. Come on. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I just want to say, I just want to thank the Lord for um, letting me see another year. Um, as Leone says, always believe in the Lord and he shall answer. Um, the, the, all blessings as well, but that's all I've got to say, really. Brother Lacan. I'd also like to say thank you to the Lord, Heavenly Father, for seeing um, another birthday. He's kept me for so, so long, um, and He's kept me through every trials and tribulations that I've seen, um, really from a very young age. Um, and I just give him all the honor and I give him all the praise. Um, and I just love him so dearly. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. I mean it from my heart, my soul, and my inner being. I love you and I thank you so much. to the back, greet somebody, and tell them that you love them.
You've done very well. That's so wonderful. You've done very well.